Welcome to Trends Travel. As always, I'm your host, Eloise Scoble, and today I find myself at home in Rosebank. That's home suite hotels right here on Bristol. This urban boutique is designed specifically for the urban traveler. And speaking of travels, Belen takes us to Newcastle where she explores Fort Amiel. Lovers of military history are sure to enjoy a tour of Fort Amiel Museum located in central Newcastle in KwaZulu Natal. The museum houses mostly military-related records, journals, weapons and photographs that depict the events dating back to the 18th century. Fort Amil Museum was opened back in 1990 as a cultural history of Newcastle. It is here that the history of the Zulu Boer War together with the Anglo Boer War is housed. So today I'm not only here to walk down memory lane, I'm here to touch and feel this historical event. Come with me. Around Newcastle, the, the most famous battles that took place were from the first Anglo Boer War, from 80 to 8081. So it was the, the British who fought against the Transvaal Republic. And um, the, at the end of that war, um, the final battle was fought at Majuba Mountain, where General Collie, who was the uh, commander of the British, were actually killed. The fort was also established at that time by a detachment of the 80th Regiment of the Staffordshire Volunteers, who came from Hong Kong at the time, because um, Natal Colony was actually just a small part of the British Empire at the time, which was ruled by Britain. Okay, the oldest inhabitants um, of Newcastle in this area was the Khoisan people, who were Stone Age people. And um, they used stone to make uh, objects and they would gather hunters as well. And then we get the influx of the Amashlubi people 700 years ago, which were um, Iron Age people. So they started working with iron and manufacturing things. They were also uh, farmers with cattle and with other um, food that they were planting. We're looking at the bow and the spears which the uh, Khoisan people used to hunt. Um, so they were putting poison on the front of uh, the, the spears and the spear points and it would um, then hit the animal and that's how they could actually um, catch, catch the animal. So it didn't kill the animal as such. This is the typical rifle that was used by the British during the Anglo-Zulu War and also the first Boer Wars in, during the 1870s and 80s. Um, it was a single bullet um, uh, rifle where you actually slotted it in there. So every time after you've been shooting you would have actually reloaded the, the rifle. Um, so this is typical of the time. It would have also been fitted with um, a knife here at the front or a bayonet to also being able to stab your enemy if you came too, too, too close to him. Over here we have um, cultural items of the, the Zulu people because during um, the Anglo-Zulu War this military fort where we are now standing played a major role during those battles. Um, so over here we've got um, on display a Zulu outfit with the traditional spear and nobkiri mm -hmm. and also um, the shield and the ibishu. Uh, what is also important was that beer was one of the major um, items that were consumed to give the to communicate with the forefathers and to give power to the Zulu warriors to be able to fight in the in their battles. The local um, Amashlubi that stayed here in Newcastle actually many of them participated on the side of the British. So it is interesting that it was not only a white and black war as such. So there were also um, other factors that played a major role during that war that makes it more complicated. Mm -hmm. So who is this fella and uh, what is he doing over here? Um, this is our local cook. 
um, here at the fort and as you would know a soldier is always hungry <laughs> and they just, just don't fight uh, they've got to eat as well mm. so he's uh, making some uh, stew over there in the pot mm -hmm. and these are, there are actually two fireplaces in this cookhouse there used to be three cookhouses because there were um, at a good time at least 200 soldiers um, at the fort um, then you will see also um, all the bottles so there were no plastics in the old days so everything was uh, put into to glass bottles from your cooking oil up to your beer and uh, your sauces everything basically this uh, train um, dates from 1938 and it was used on our steelworks in the old days because steel was one of our main industries of Newcastle. A war museum tour will not be complete without a demonstration. So for all time's sake, our guide gave us a big bang send-off we will never forget. We will be back with more on trains travel right after this very short break. But I just want to remind you that you can catch us on Twitter and on Instagram. That's on trains on SABC using the hashtag SABC News. Be ready when the future calls to share your ideas, your talents. Celebrate moments that matter. Nurture your family and community. Passion, determination, hard work. That's what drives you. Imagine a bank that's passionate about supporting your growth, that joins you on your financial journey and is part of your future. That's you, Bank. Growing with you. We're explorers. We always have been endlessly curious always looking for answers for new frontiers for new stories because that is who we are from script to screen from yelling action to taking you on a journey radio producers script writers on-air presenters news reporters sports analysts we spend late nights creating captivating storylines and earlier mornings keeping you informed, educated and entertained. For us, it's not a job. It's a calling. We do this and more because you do your part. SABC TV Licenses. Made possible by you. winter months there is nothing as satisfying as deeply layered full flavored comfort food and that's exactly what Njavula gives us. In the cooler seasons there is simply nothing like winter food. Trends Travel visited this Italian restaurant in Hyde Park to get a glimpse of what our winter plates should look like. Chef Caitlin Drake had prepared two beautiful dishes for us to taste. Chef, we're heading to winter. Uh, it's that time of the year where we want to indulge with hearty, warm food. But today, what have you prepared for us? So I've prepared for you the bruschetta that's on Zero's winter menu. Um, one of the slices is a tomato and balsamic yes. bruschetta, and then the other one is a telegio and fig. Question. If it's winter, I would expect more of a soup type of starter or meal. Why the specific one? So the reason why I chose this dish to present to you is because it's quite a healthier option for winter but at the same time it fills you up. Um, also we try and leave the hearty dishes for main course okay. so this is like a nice ease into your dinner. Ease, yeah, true. Cool. So this is a healthy option, it's also open to vegetarians as well uh, which is why it makes it one of my favourites. Okay, so now give it a taste and let you know how it tastes. Very healthy, mm. very easy. True. Because I wanna, by the time I get to the main course, I'm already full. So, yeah, it just lays it out very nicely. 
All right, so can we just the second one? We'll just have at the back in this case. Quite different flavors. Yeah, mm. quite, quite. Very, quite different flavors. Mm. Okay. Um, I think for me, this one is my favorite one. Okay. Yeah, I think I loved it. I love the texture. I love the flavoring in it. Alright, everybody has their own. That's what I say for me, it's because of the contrast. That's why yes. I enjoy this dish so much. Okay, cool. Let me have one last bite. Mm. While enjoying the hearty warmth of our starter, our main was already on its way. Chef, <sighs> this smells divine. Thank you. What's in here? So this is our beef fillet concerto pasta. It's a beef fillet and tomato based pasta. It also incorporates quite a lot of Mediterranean flavors. Take us through the ingredients, what do we infuse, the flavoring and all those things. So in the pan we start off with some beef fillet that gets pan fried. Then we add our homemade Napolitana sauce. From there we add the touch of chili just to give you some warmth this winter. Then you add the roasted peppers and roasted tomatoes, then it will go to the pass. And the pasta that we specifically use, the shape, is casareche. That's where the name beef for the casareche comes from. And then, as I say, it's just finished off with some grana fondana and then the onion crumb and fresh chives. Mm. Cannot wait to dig in. Okay. Absolutely amazing. This is what we call winter. Yes. This is very nice, Chef. And of okay. course, nice glass of red wine. Always. Always. <laughs> chef, the tips for this winter. What can we expect? What can we be eating? The do's and don'ts. You know, it's winter you can just go wild, but you know, give us some tips. Winter, I think people maybe need to hold themselves back so much. It's not so much snacking. Let's kind of look at healthy options. I know that it is winter, but at the same time, you can have a healthy pasta like this as opposed to some takeout. Yes. <laughs> um, so that would be my advice is summer bodies are made in winter. Yes. So let's live by that. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Alright, so I'll enjoy this lovely meal. Coming up next, our resident fashionista takes us to Soweto for their take on autumn and winter fashion. Cue Soweto Fashion Week. Winter 2019 is here and the Soweto designers promise to fire things up this season. We are at Soweto Fashion Week and I'm sure all the fashionistas out there would agree with me that animal print is always in style. This time the designers were briefed with cow hide. I cannot wait to see what they come up with. Over the years this runway has been graced with fashion icons from all over the country and abroad. On the runway we saw a spectacular fashion showcase by New York based American designer Clevon Leonard who had an interesting interpretation of the cowhide theme. My interpretation, it was cowhide, and so what I thought about, initially I thought about leather, you know, yeah. cowhide and leather, and um, I, I, I was like, it was a little late for me to put my leather collection together, <laughs> and so what I did, I, I incorporated animals, because I thought of hide, and I thought of animals, and um, I tried to incorporate that into the designs, and um, try to use a little creativity, and style, and uh, femininity, and class, uh, for the men's structure, and class, you know, a classic man. So Weto is alive with creativity, with many young designers who long to see their names on the big stages one day, the Soweto Fashion Week is a launching pad for them. Autumn is no longer browns and greys, this designer brought bright colours to the runway. Winter fashion is also an opportunity to give a new take on old prints and designs, but also giving a fresh take on the well-known tribal print. given a brief but I can see that you didn't stick to the brief why is that as I said the brand is uh, misfits it's uh, rebels basically it's the people that do not conform to the systems that do things differently I understand um, fashion is not about looking the next season it's about being futuristic that's for me is summer 2020 
summer 2020 high-end mix uh, king streetwear type of uh, fashion uh, I have to be three steps ahead I can't follow trends I have to be a trend setter or a breaker of the trends that are already and revamp and bring new ones in well, I didn't get to see any leather on the runway. However, the clothes that were showcased are a true testament to South Africa's innovation when it comes to great design. There's definitely a bright future for South African fashion. predicting with the sixth parliament they've got to up their game why is it so important for you to create platforms where people can share and grow i think there's something special about conversation and sharing of experiences Mkwebane investigated the role of senior anc leaders in the free state including then premier advocate Mkwebane has never explained why she altered the provisional report in material ways the provisional report there's no way where it's mentioning that the premier is implicated this is such a, a massive festival and what does it mean to you as an artist it's more than humbling for me to actually be showcasing everything about my music so it's celebrating africa the sabc news mobile app is your one-stop digital portal to all the news you need stay connected with the latest in breaking news watch the sabc news channel along with clips and live streams of all the big news events and listen to all the SABC News radio stations live, including podcasts and much more. Simply download the SABC News app to your Android or iOS device from either the Play Store or the App Store. SABC News. Independent. Impartial. In my time, I've truly seen it all firsthand. Going through my photographs and reflecting on my memory box really brings back many life experiences that are bittersweet and humbling. In this, my homeland, I've entertained tourists and offshore traders. I've evolved from dealing with the battering system to trading foreign exchange. I've traveled to the ends of the world and tasted a diversity of culinary palates. To outsiders, I have lived alongside wild animals, tamed some, and collected livestock as wealth. So my memory box is overflowing. And don't get me wrong, I'm not bragging, but in fact, I'm breaking and hurting deep down inside of this heart of mine. Why? What for? I hear you ask yourself, my fellow Africans, friends and family. The images I have of me are those of the point of view of my onlooker, not those of myself, the subject at hand. I'm choking and suffocating at the chalice those anthropologists and filmmakers tie around me as some sort of grand name tag. Stories have been made and told of me, not of my own words. Films and graphic images have entertained millions of audiences at my expense. Roughly one and a half hours from Cape Town, this is Langabon. And this is one of its most popular and noteworthy destinations, Langabon Country Estate. It is here in this mini mansion that we will be settling in as our home for the next few days. In the downstairs welcome area, the decor is fresh and cool with that unmistakable holiday feel. Even the wall hangings are a reminder that it's time to go into serious vacay mode. Each of the four to five bedrooms at any of the holiday homes is decked out with two singles or one queen bed, with bath on suite of course, obviously, and the same soothing dreamy water theme. Upstairs is a huge dining area, complete with a fully fitted kitchen for those who are inclined to self-cater, and a lounge that is the envy of every family holiday home. There is a seat for everyone, no one is left out. The interior decoration is all fishy and shelly, 
and beautifully rustic. The patio is all things relaxing and open and spacious. The back of our unit overlooks the Gary Player Designer Golf Course. For those who don't golf, it's an eye-catching bonus to the surrounds. It's also a stone's throw away from the clubhouse. Absolutely, so everything's on your doorstep. You can choose to sit at home and we can deliver something to you to eat or you can take a walk up to our restaurants with beautiful views over the lagoon or you have the self-catering facilities and you can make your own food, so it's all optional. Our first order of business is to hit the LCE Oxy Gym. This happens to be the only gym in Langebon. I start out on the treadmill for a bit of cardio before hitting this uphill stepper thing. Being a tad unfit, I was kind of struggling there for a bit, but decided that boxing was more my speed. Getting rid of the fat frustration, Rocky style. Oxy Gym is used by the local rugby team, so don't be surprised if you run into virtually anyone in the Super 8. After a quick shower, it's onto the lush green grass of the Lawn Bowls Club for a lesson in all things bowls, starting with the ball. On each side you've got a large emblem and a small emblem. This is a crab. Every bowl tries to have a different emblem, so when you make up your teams, you don't come across the same one, you know which bowls to pick up. They come in blacks and browns and today is colours and all sorts of things. There you've got the size and this is a one heavy or two heavy and you get one heavy and you get naught noughts. In the old days what they used to say, you used to hold the bowl and then if you did that and you stayed in your hand it was alright for you. If you dropped it, then you then it was too big. Yeah, so hold it nice. You can put your hands, spread your hands, put your thumb on the side just so it feels nice and comfortable. And then what you do is keep that elbow straight, keep your legs together, put that foot forward and look out where you're going to and you just let it go through. The bowl will keep on going straight until it slows and because it has a bias towards the small side so as it slows it starts to tilt and that's where you get the 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 bend coming in so would you like to try it out on there i would i just have a question okay what is the aim of the game is it to hit the other balls no the aim of the game is to get as many balls as as you can close to the kitty the kitty being the white ball then it's time to give it a go. I'm pretty proud of my efforts, but still don't know if I'm winning or losing. But I do know that I'm having all sorts of fun in this game deemed for the aged. The lagoon in Langaban is seasonally abuzz with all sorts of water sports, and I decided to try my hand at Hobie Catting. Waking up in Langabad Country Estate is an amazing experience. We have a full lineup today that starts with breakfast at the clubhouse and then we make our way to the Langabad Yacht Club in search of the lagoon. Langabad is stay, Country Estate is very centralized for people to stay and then visit all the lovely destinations close by. Once on the beach, I am donned with a wetsuit and then pulled and tugged around to set my harness in place, all to get ready for my lesson in Hobie Catting. Out there into the deep dark waters, guys. I'm given a pink tee to wear over my gear as each school on the lagoon is represented by a different color. This one happens to be femininely pink and all female. Uh, we've got mostly female instructors at the moment, but our boys are a little bit stronger. So we do have some boys just to deal with the bigger guys. But it's female owned. It's female owned. Female, female, female run. Female run. What is Yeah. And uh, Hobie Cake. Hobie Cake. Yeah. 
Okay, let's do this. I listen intently as my instructor gives me my safety talk. Then, just to be safe, she gives me a demonstration. Is this for stability and talk to yourself again? At no point will she stand up. If you okay. stand up, you fall off. Okay. Okay. So then you let your butt over the side and you hang. Okay. Okay. You gotta trust the cable. Back foot, front foot, release. Oh. What I'll do is I'll make sure that your jib's fully in before letting you in. Then your idea <laughs> is this. My attempt at doing what she just showed me is difficult and oddly comical. She has clearly mastered the technique of straddling with grace, whereas I just look like a clown. A few attempts later and I am standing like a pro. Guys, this is so ready. I'm gonna do this for you. Now it's Hobie in the water time. The lagoon is huge and stretches for miles as far as the eye can see. It's so big that there are multiple water activities happening at the same time with no one getting in anyone's way. From variations of kite surfing to some learning to kite surf and pro kite surfers. Even me out on the deep blue waters doing exactly what I was taught only moments before. If water sports is not your thing, the lagoon still offers a lot, with leisurely walks to the nearby shopping hub, or just playing on the beach in the shallow waters, or enjoying the sights, sounds and sun. After a significant stretch on the waters, it's time to bring the Hobie in. I help anchor this colorful lady to the beach, fully satisfied with my ambitious adventure. Then it's back home, where we have the choice of lounging in our accommodations or making a turn at the spa. The spa wins hands down. This is an award-winning little gym. After all the day's activity and sun, it's nice to wind down with a full body massage. The calming music, the essential oils and the talented hands of the masseuse are enough to put me to sleep. In fact, that's exactly what she does as the sun sets over Langabon. And that's all we have for you in this week's edition of Trains Travel. Coming to you from Home Sweet Hotels, Bristol, where you can get some of the most amazing treetop views. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place.